guys, it's Willie Sandry. Today we're going to be showing you step by step how to apply this dark brown mission finish. So we'll go over the whole process in detail. Check the description box for all the products that we're using today. You can apply this finish for any project that you're working on in your shop, but it's a great complement to an arts and crafts style piece. Stick around, we'll get into it. Okay, so we recently refinished a rocking chair uh, with this same type of finishing formula and it just didn't quite come out as dark as we wanted so we're going to add the rest of this uh, trans tint in the dark mission brown into our non-grain raising solution and again this is a 50-50 mixture of denatured alcohol and lacquer thinner that we use to mix our trans tint dye and that's a really good way so that you don't raise the grain on this first step of applying the dye We'll mix that a little bit up and uh, we'll just show you my favorite method for finishing is actually using these staining sponges. It's just a sponge that's covered in a piece of clean terry cloth and what we found is that if you dip these rather than really dunking them, um, just, just dip an edge, squeeze off the excess and that's a really good way to uh, get the dye process started and you can really quickly get a nice shade a nice undercoat an undercolor developing here but really resist the urge to just absolutely slather it on you want to go over it more or less one time and then just move on so we're going to really quickly hit the back side here and we'll flip it over and we'll continue to move quickly and and get that coat of dye on the front of our picture frame look at that nice rich color it almost looks antique right away I love finishes that can do that for you just give you that antique look on day one What you'll find working with a die is that you'll be tempted to keep going over and over it again. And I really just encourage you to just go over it once and walk away. That's what I'm always saying. Go over it once and walk away when it comes to dye. Because if you continue to apply more and more coats, it will just get that much darker. And at some point it's going to be too dark for your liking. And so. Just dip it, don't dunk it, and hit it once, and walk away. That's kind of the, the rules for success when you're working with dye. If you get a little too much anywhere, have a clean rag nearby and just wipe off the excess. If you have a large project, you'll really want to have an extra set of hands. A little pair of frames here I can handle by myself, no problem. quickly, especially with this non-grain raising formula with the denatured alcohol and the lacquer thinner. Even with water-based dyes, you do have to move very, very quickly to get good results, but with the non-grain raising, you won't have to have that extra step of re-sanding the finish on a, a product that you just finished sanding. That's my least favorite part about dyes mixed in water is having to sand the bloody thing after I just finished sanding it and so just skip that step and use a non-grain raising dye 50-50 denatured alcohol and lacquer thinner works great and remember you're gonna have another coat of gel stain on top of this so this is not the final color layer you'll have a chance to make color corrections and I guarantee you that when you finish with the die step, you will be convinced that you just ruined your project. And it's just a matter of using it enough to realize what it's supposed to look like when you're done. And to realize that no, you didn't ruin your project. You're just one step in and additional color coats will come and improve the overall look of the project. So this is the look of the trans tint dark mission brown. It's still 
drying a little bit here, but this is basically the flat, dark color that you can expect after applying the dye. And we'll seal that in next with a shellac seal coat. And it'll start to liven it up a little bit. We'll follow that with gel stain and finally a lacquer top coat. This process is a little bit labor intensive, but it's one of the prettier finishes you can apply for that arts and crafts look. So once the seal coat is applied, it starts to warm up the color of the dye a little bit, but there's certainly not much of a film developing yet. So we'll scuff sand that yet. Its purpose is just to seal between the dye and the gel stain layer. So we'll scuff sand the shellac a bit and then it'll be on to the gel stain. So we can drop these frames down off of the screw block for a minute and just give them a light scuff sanding with very fine soft sanding sponges. Somewhere in the 800 to 1000 range will be fine. Just to knock off any roughness from the shellac seal coat. So once the shellac seal coat has been scuff sanded, blown off with compressed air and wiped down with a cheesecloth, you can go ahead and apply the gel stain. In this case, we're using General Finishes Antique Walnut. Now, interestingly, if you were to skip the shellac seal coat step, um, which we've done on a number of occasions, uh, just to save time and to experiment with different looks, what you'll notice there if you skip the shellac seal coat is that you get a much darker finish, regardless of what type of uh, gel stain you're actually using. And the other thing you'll notice is that you have far less control over the final color when applying the gel stain. And so there's a couple reasons we like to stick with Jeff Jewett's original recipe to use the shellac seal coat and that's because, or some type of sealer, and that's specifically because you get a consistent color that you can count on from time to time and it's actually easy to wipe back because you have that smooth sealer coat underneath. That's the product we're using and we'll go ahead and continue to wipe this on until everything's evenly coated. A light pass with the grain and we'll let this dry probably overnight. my best gun for spraying the top coat of lacquer. We're going to put on two coats of lacquer in a satin finish and it goes without saying that uh, anytime you spray finishes you should not only be using a respirator but one that has cartridges that are specifically approved for organic vapors.
of low angle, very critical lighting situation, we can see the nice smooth finish laid down by our Fuji LX20 HBLP gun. Does a nice job with lacquer. We'll get going on that second coat. looking top coat. Two coats of pre-catalyzed lacquer down. Just about ready to install our artwork and matting. So this finish has become one of my favorites and it's a great way to highlight the medullary rays it brings out the grain, but not in an obtrusive way, and I just think it really looks authentic compared to some antique furniture pieces we've had in the shop. Give it a try. All right, guys, well, that's the step-by-step -step process for applying the dark brown mission finish. I hope you get a chance to use it in your shop. Thanks again for watching.